Uh, right, still to come tonight, uh, we'll be talking to Beverly Knight and Ruth Jones about Sister Act the Musical, which returns to the stage later this month. But before that, we are taking a fascinating dive into the world of conspiracy theories with the BBC's first ever disinformation and social media correspondent. It's Mariana Spring. <laughs> Okay. Hello, thanks for having me. This oh, is going to well, be interesting. Thanks so much for popping over. Now, you've been doing this job for four years. Yes. It's a very grand title. Mm. Somewhat <laughs> baffling to me, though. <laughs> so just tell me now, then, how it sort of serves people like us and the viewers at home. What do you do? I think the best way of describing it is that I essentially investigate everything bad on social media. So I'm looking at trolls, I'm looking at conspiracy theories, algorithms, which are the computer-generated systems that recommend all of us stuff on our phones. And a lot of it's about the real-world harm that this can cause, maybe to each of us individually, if you're getting trolled, if you're being targeted with this kind of content. Kids and young people on their phones being recommended different kind of content that could cause them harm. And um, But also, kind of zooming out, it's about elections, it's about stuff going on in the world, which is now almost, you know, whether it's a vote or whether it's something big happening anywhere, it's accompanied by a wave on social media, mm. often of mm. conspiracy theories, sometimes hate as well. Yeah. Gosh, it's a big job, isn't There's it? There's a lot going on. Yeah. I mean, we're all exposed to social media every single day. I mean, mm. every time I pick up my phone, I'm on some form of social media, even if I don't want to be. Um, but it is easy, isn't it, for people just to kind of like fall down these, these rabbit yeah. holes? Yeah, and I think that there are lots of misconceptions about who believes conspiracy theories. Um, I've heard people tell me about them before, you know, saying that people are um, stupid or that they don't know what's going on. And I often find that's not the case at all. Often people are very curious, they're looking for answers, they've had a bad experience or they're deeply distrustful um, and they are hyper exposed to this stuff online. Mm. And it's worth saying, you know, these kinds of conspiracy theories aren't um, legitimate concerns or questions or worries. They're the really extreme stuff, believing that the pandemic was a hoax or that wars are hoax or that um, terror attacks have been staged in some way. So stuff for which there's no evidence, in mm. fact, they're totally contrary to it. Yeah. So what you've been doing is sort of confronting some of these people who are spreading these conspiracy theories as part of your new book. What did you hope to kind of learn about them and what did you want to achieve then? I think that um, one of the most important things is to actually get up close with this stuff, to really investigate it and go out, not just to sit there on your phone or on your computer looking at it. And so I think when it comes to conspiracy theories in particular and the trolls, I wanted to understand why people do what they do. And I think mm. that that point about empathy is really crucial here because sometimes people can be really dismissive. And I think the why is more important than the what a lot yeah. of the time. And you actually want to really get to the bottom of um, how someone's ended up at this point. Maybe they do truly believe this stuff, or maybe there's another motive. They're making money, they're growing a following, they've got fans out of it. Um, and it's my job to hold these people to account. But it's also, I hope, part of the solution to actually expose this stuff and for all of us to better understand why it happens and how it happens. Yeah. yeah you, you clearly must have to spend a lot of time on social media as part of your job, which I don't think it's not going to be great for your mental health or just 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 feel great at all to constantly having to go through all this trolling that can that can happen. What do you do to like just de stress and Relax, just relax and enjoy yourself. Yeah, I'm, I'm not very good at switching off at all, my yeah. phone or in general. Uh, the one thing I do love to do is go to the football. I'm a big Spurs fan. Oh, used to watch here Jamaica. we go. <laughs> just slid that in there perfectly, didn't I? <laughs> you knew the answer to that question, <laughs> and that's why he asked I know. it. Go on, I know. Spurs. But, I mean, it's not, it's not the most relaxing thing watching Spurs, but at right. least I don't look at my phone most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> Stay watching. on the right side, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't worry. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's fascinating it's... what you do, but it's huge, isn't it? Thank you, Marianne. Yeah, thank, thank you so you much for having me. Uh, well, Marina's book, Among the Trolls, is out on Thursday. Plus, you can also watch her Panorama special about the upcoming American election yeah. tonight at 8 o'clock on BBC One and iPlayer. Uh, but first, last time it was on stage, it was enjoyed by over half a million people. And the good news is, Sister at the Musical is back. Yes, in just a moment, we'll be chatting to two of its stars, Ruth Jones and Beverly Knight. But first, let's see what makes it the most joyous musical in town. We doing this then or what? Oh, the vocals, the vocals! And Ruth are going to join us now! <laughs> See, now that is uplifting, that isn't is it? It is uplifting. Welcome to the show, both of you. Uh, Beverly, okay. you're returning, aren't you, uh, to the role of Dolores uh, for the musical. Um, I mean, you're familiar, aren't you, with this role? Give us a reminder, hmm. obviously, you know, for people who haven't seen Sister Act, I mean, I don't know who you people are, by the way, but if you haven't <laughs> seen it, 
Just give them a reminder. <laughs> so, I play um, a wannabe singer uh, called Dolores Van Cartier, who um, is uh, hiding from her gangster boyfriend, uh, who she saw um, bump off one of his gangster crew. Yep. Um, and she's hiding from him in a convent. So she's disguised as a nun, which puts her on a collision course with Mother Superior. <laughs> it is such a brilliant plot, isn't it? Um, Ruth, this is your West End debut. I'm excited for you. The West End won't know us, hit them. Um, so as Beverly said, playing Mother Superior. Now, lots of people have done this. Maggie Smith in the film mm. and then Jennifer Saunders in the musical. Oof. Are you names, putting... Well, there is a couple of names <laughs> there, but, I mean, you're putting your own spin on it, I gather, are you? Well, yes. I mean, Kel Surprise, she is Welsh. <laughs> um, <laughs> and she why not? Moved, <laughs> she moved to Philadelphia, where it's set, 27 years ago. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, she hasn't really lost her accent, because a lot of people don't lose their accent. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it's funny you mentioned Maggie Smith. I actually had a dream that Maggie Smith said to me, I hear you're playing her Welsh. No, 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 that will not do. <laughs> that really freaked me out. So, uh, yeah, I'm glad that you're excited about it, Alex. I am. Um, I would use other adjectives. I mean, I am excited now, because I've done two weeks in Dublin with the touring cast, who are fantastic, and... Um, but it, it was terrifying. It was, it's been a terrifying experience. And also, you know, I'm singing with... Beverly yeah. Knight. Good well, yeah, I mean, that Good would luck. be I'm a little funny bit next to you. Girl, come on. That's a fair point. <laughs> there you go. That's a fair point. A good comeback as well. <laughs> um, Beverly, the cast also includes uh, Leslie Joseph and yes. singer Lamar. That's right. Um, now, I mean, Lamar's kind of new to this. I'm hearing you had to, like, encourage him to get into musical <sighs> theatre. I said to Lamar, he's, he's going to be watching this laughing now, but <laughs> I said to him, like, ten years ago, Lamar, yeah. Lamar, yeah. you really need to get into this. I know you can act. You've got that about you. I know you can. You'd be so good. No, no, no. You know, he's mm. cool. No, 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 no. <laughs> You know, you know. Next thing you know, I see him in a film, and I'm like, oh, OK, all right. Uh. And then when um, it was announced that he would be playing Curtis Jackson, the baddie who comes mm. after me, I was like, Yes, oh, and he's so, finally. He's so yeah. good at it. Isn't and he's he? great. He's absolutely brilliant. He's yeah. great. He's got all the suave, so natural. He's, he's like a really natural actor. I he think. really is. Mm. Yeah. He really you forget is. as well how brilliant his voice is. You know, yeah. he was on the mass singer, wasn't he? And you were like, oh, it's Lamar. He's amazing. Yeah. Exactly. Um, now, Ruth, you back to you when you're singing. <laughs> now we know you can sing because yes. we heard you, of course. You know, as Ness and Gavin, you were the number one. I did have Islands a in the stream. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, no, I didn't have a number one. Nessa Jenkins had a number one. Hit. It doesn't matter. Doesn't Supported matter. by you. <laughs> there you go. Um, <laughs> is this, you know, is it quite daunting or. Yes. Because this in a is word. different, isn't it? In a it? word, yeah. yes. <laughs> because, you know, you are surrounded with not just Beverly Knight, who is, I mean, uh, all of the cast that, you know, in both the touring production and in the, the London production, I, their voices are just astonishing. Mm -hmm. I sit there and I, when I was in Dublin, I used to sit in the wings and just listen to them sing because oh. it's so fabulous. Um, so, and then <laughs> Muggins comes along and it's <laughs> like, oh God, no. I didn't look at anyone to see what they're doing. Thankfully, my songs are, you know, they, one of them particularly is a sort of comedy-ish song, so that's, that's okay. But my fear, and one of the reasons I haven't done theatre for a long time, I did it in 2018, and prior to that, it was like 20, 2006, uh, it's because I have a fear of forgetting my lines. And I'm now discovering that everyone has this fear, but I yeah. just thought it was me, right? So everything went fine in Dublin. I really enjoyed it. Got to this one performance, and it's me on my own singing this solo song. Oh. I completely blanked. Oh, God. And I started... I carried on singing the tune, right? Mm -hmm. But I was just inventing words. I was yeah. going, I'm losing the plot. It's all going wrong. <laughs> I really don't know what to do. <laughs> oh, my yeah. God. I came off and was like this. Shaking, thinking, oh, that's it, it's over, it's over. But I think I got over that fear. Hopefully, the next night it was OK. And hopefully it won't happen to me again. <laughs> and the audience would never know, see? No. They don't know what yeah, to I expect. Well, I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. I, let's just hope it doesn't happen again. Let's you just got hope for I it. You'll be no, fine. You've 
yeah. it's happened yeah. now. You're going to yes. be fine. You got through it. It's exactly. brilliant. Um, I mentioned uh, at the top there, Beverly, that over half a million people came to see the last run yes. uh, of, of Sister Act. What, what is it, do you think, about this story, this you know, from the film to the musical, that people just engage with and love so much? It's pure joy mm -hmm. it's just so uplifting it's so life affirming yeah. you know this gangster's mole who, yeah. who wants to be a singer comes in and teaches a bunch of nuns how to sing <laughs> uh, so good people love so good. nuns yeah. there's a line in yeah. the show where i say people love nuns you know <laughs> and they do they just there's something i don't know warm about yeah. Um, yeah. seeing women dressed in in, in the whole yeah. outfit and everything and and you add that to the, the miserable mother superior <laughs> and the you, the comedy just the comedy that ensues people yeah. just yeah. want to see it again and again and again and it's, i think by the fun. end by the end of it, of the show mm. Every, it's not just about actors on stage. It's the whole, yeah, the whole everybody. of the audience are joining in, aren't they? And they're like singing along, and you just have this whole sense of communion with the audience. It's fantastic, and you really feel, you know, people leave there that night, and they're just uplifted. Yeah, yeah. let's Definitely. be honest. Lovely. We could all do with we a bit need of it. uplifting. We need it. Well, I mean, Beverly Knight and a Welsh mother superior. I'm in. Yeah. Sister <laughs> Act is on from the 15th of March at the Dominion Theatre in London, and tickets are on sale now. Uh, plus, you. if you'd like to see another epic performance from Beverly, uh, you can also catch her Radio 2 Piano Rooms uh, on BBC iPlayer. Yeah. Um, Ruth, it's a bit like Griff kind of was saying, the r and you know, very close you know, to, to yourself and your family. Well, as I was well. brought up in Porthcawl, um, which is in between Cardiff and Swansea. The, the RNLI play a huge part of in the, the community there because that's the thing, the RNLI is a huge community mm -hmm. institution. Yeah. A lot of people get involved who don't go out on, on the boats and, and rescue, but they maybe do things like work in the shop or, or whatever, Amazing. you know? Um, and it's, it's huge. So, so like, um, you know, in, when my dad died, they lowered the flag for, for him because he oh. was a supporter of the RNLI. So the, the RNLI flag Amazing. was lowered. And I spend a lot of time in Scotland as well, in the Northwest and Loch Inver, uh, RNLI, they cover a huge vast, yeah. a huge area, you know? It's, uh, they are, they, they are such they are. humble heroes. Yeah, they are indeed. Special yeah. people. Nice. Yeah. Okay, Brilliant. quick. Quickly, favourite children's book, Beverly? Essie Hinton's The Outsiders. Nice. Ruth? Paddington. Yes. Paddington. Can't be a bit of Paddington. Classic. Still going strong. <laughs> Thanks so much to our guests who are Ruth and Beverly and Mariana. Uh, Lauren and I will be here tomorrow and we'll be joined by actor Jake Wood, plus fresh from their Snow Going Back Comet Relief Challenge, Alex Scott and Vicky Patterson will be here too. Have a great evening. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.